let us begin our stream today. Hello, 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 everybody. We're back from the holiday break. Um, did very little streaming last week because of Thanksgiving. It was pretty busy through the week. Uh, so we're back to our regular streaming schedule for the most part until obviously Christmas in a couple weeks. I'll figure out what happens there. As soon as my stream loads. There we go. Um, but anyway, we're playing some Barman today. I've been messing around a lot with Death and Taxes the past couple weeks after uh, Ren and Six got banned. And I was looking over the results of uh, the GP, the Legacy GP this past weekend. And I really wasn't sure what I wanted to play. Barman did really well. Death and Taxes uh, also did really well. Uh, there was like a Death and Taxes mirror in the finals of like one of the uh, Friday events or something. Uh, the Barman made three places, like two places in the top 32 and one person at like 35th, I think. And DNT also made a couple into the top 64. I think, I believe the very first Barman placing was right above the very first Death and Taxes placing. Uh, but both both the decks that I'm pretty interested in had uh, pretty good weekends, all things considered. So I was I, I was going to like try to play the one that I thought was like more well positioned or something, but I don't know. We've been they've both been doing good, so we're just gonna kind of mess around, bounce some ideas off of uh, both decks. So Barman is a deck that doesn't really get to move around its parts a lot lately, and I've changed very little about this deck list. But there's one thing in particular that I'll, I'm gonna touch on. Besides the snow covered plains, it's a tradition at this point. I did it last year, all through December. I just swap all my planes for snow covered planes. Um, I if for those of you that uh, follow the stream, I'm not a big fan of snow covered lands. <laughs> Never liked doing the uh, snow covered split and death attacks. It's just like it doesn't actually matter, and especially with Astrolabe now, snow covered lands gain uh, even more bad press. So I kind of hate them, but it's December, which means we gotta show our holiday spirit by playing our snow lands. It's not doing the split, because it's like splitting lands. Um, the other thing, I swapped two Mystic Forges out for to try an old, older piece of tech. Not that old, because it was literally printed last year. Uh, Karn Cyan of Urza, which was a pretty big powerhouse for this deck pre-Mystic Forge that people were playing. Uh, especially in tandem with like a bunch of Ancient Dens as well. Karn Sign of Urza could really just crank out some uh, some real beefy guys and just beat down your opponent. But really fa fell off the wayside when they printed Mystic Forge. Just They fill kind of similar roles as this 4-drop. Very, like, value engine-y. Mystic Forge draws you a bunch of cards. Scion, like, produces multiple threats and then slowly kind of makes a Howling Mine later turns. But yeah, Karn Sign of Urza kind of fell off the way a little bit. And I've never actually gotten to play with it. I picked up Bomberman after Mystic Forge was a mainstay. So I was just, I don't know, doing some thinking about the cards that I wanted. I also kind of want to fit a liquid metal pudding in the sideboard, but I don't really know where I want to make room for it, so we're just not playing it today. Needs more Fail of Summer. Listen, if I could make two-color Bomberman that had a functional mana base, I would think about it. But uh, anyway, Mystic Forge has a couple liabilities right now. The biggest one, I would say, is probably the prevalence of Oko in a lot of the control decks. Music Forge, obviously, at its best in the grindy matchups, where you just, like, get to draw five-plus cards a turn, even if three of them are, like, Lotus Petals and they don't really do anything. It just gives you a ton of card advantage. But it's really bad against Oko because they turn into a 3-3 Elk. Karn, however, cannot be turned into an Elk and also makes big guys that pressure the Oko. Those can be turned into Elk, obviously, but a lot less devastating for your board state for sure the other thing is that i think like more a lot more and more like the delver decks and stuff are picking up null rods in the sideboard which is really obnoxious to for the deck a lot so i think having more not null rodable threats is pretty interesting it's even especially also in like chalice mirrors mystic forge felt kind of weak at times like it could at least dig the zeros off the top of your deck but like it didn't really get there all that well current side of her is a just kind of wanted to give it a shot. I think it might actually have potential to be better than Mystic Forge against, like, some of the, uh, the big hate cards that are out there. Um, other than that, everything stays the same. I'm leaving one Mystic Forge, though. I don't I don't want to do, it like, a clean split. I kind of value the Mystic Forge. 
it's weird to say this, but, like, I value having the Mystic Forge in a lot of matchups where you board it out. Because you get the ability to wish for it afterwards. Which is, like, I don't want... I don't think it's worth the sideboard slot, because your sideboard in some ways is, like, more cramped than your main deck at times for cards like this. But in some matchups, like, that you don't want Mystic Forge, you still kind of want access to a Mystic Forge sometimes. Like, I played against Delver a fair bit post-board, and you don't want Mystic Forge, because it's very slow, and it deals you damage and stuff. But some post-board games, you're just sitting there, and your Karn, the Great Creator, like, you're not near your Microsynth Lattice Mana, and you kind of just want to go wish for something, and you can wish for a Mystic Forge to push through counter spells or just like draw you out of these grinding board states so having one of the 75 i think is that uh pretty uh important still but anyway um enough talking about this deck let's play some magic i haven't played magic in a solid week here we are playing bomberman Still don't know what I'm playing at the Legacy Championships next month. I guess it kind of depends once we have all the data. We have 32 of the 40 qualifiers. So once we get the last eight, we know the 40 people that should be playing in the event. Which may or may not inform my decision. Alright, gotta turn my brain back into... Uh, Bomberman headspace. We're on the draw. Ugh, this hand is close to just turn one Carne. We can turn one Chalice, but we're really down on mana. We have a redraw, and we're on the draw, so we get a draw on top of that. This is not unreasonable. It's a little bit loose. I think we probably can get a better six. Opponent kept seven. We miss on our draw step. We go Cavern, Petal, Chalice, and Bobble. Bobble, we get two draws towards another land, and then we're one man away from the card. I think this might actually be a keep on the draw. I'm kind of into this. Maybe my brain's just not back in Bomberman mode yet. Uh, Mox Diamond, or anything. Maybe we don't burn our Chalice on one here. Yeah, looks like we're playing against Jesus against lands. My opponent leads on one spawn time. Do I force it? I don't think so. That doesn't sound correct. Like, how many times do you are you supposed to force the cantrip? Right. Uh, all right. So this is our whole hand, which is good for me, I guess. If we can just draw like a soul land, we just destroy their whole life here. Or some of it, at least. They can still, like, play these lands, obviously. But turning off three diamonds is pretty huge. They have forest, bog, stage. So they have bog and forest in hand. I need them to really not find a wasteland. Now, that's pretty good. We're one man away from just killing our opponent now. They have the bog in hand, so they can't, like, crop our forest. So we're just gonna cavern bobble. Try to draw into... Uh, land here. Need two draws of land to just kill my opponent outright. They don't find like a wasteland. Alright, they found the dark depths, but they can't activate this turn, right? <clears throat> hand is bog plus depths dicks <laughs> well we get one more turn because our opponent's just gonna like try to make a 2020 here and we get a bunch of extra redraws now <laughs> Thank you. 
So they drew the Maze of Ith for turn, we know that. And the Bobble. Oh no, we can't just kill them with the Salvagers. We don't have infinite things. Yeah, we need to hit last turn. We might need to Karn bridge them now, which is a lot worse for me. Or we can draw a Ballista plus a Mana Sorcerer. Let's not Ballista plus Mana Source. So we can't just Salvagers kill them, right? <sighs> we just have to Karn, LED, Karn Bridge LED. And then we can just lattice them. We'll have one, two, three, four. We'll be we have to like slowly lattice them, but so we have this salvagers. We can play a bunch of chalices and try infinite cards, but then our opponent kills us in twenty twenty. So yeah. This for three white. Minus. They actually didn't respond to my Karn, so they can't actually make the Merit Lage right now. Should I have actually done something different, like not activated the Karn because of that? Probably. They also should have made a 2020 response, I believe. I definitely shouldn't have cracked, though, because they can't make the Merit Lage now because they let the Karn resolve. So I shouldn't have cracked because I could just set up to like try to lattice them, but now we're just gonna we're in it to get the. We could crypt this life from loam actually. Then we waste our LED. Their hand is bog maze. Man, really fucked this up. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to get bog anyway, or I'm supposed to get crypt anyway here. Because if they, like, dredge wasteland here, it sucks shit for us. Field of the Dead. Oh, that's not that bad. Now they just, like, get a bunch more land drops for no reason, though. And they get this Rashad port, which is pretty bad for us. In terms of trying to cast, uh, like, a Lattice or something to just kill them. Yeah. Graveyard, which means I can wish for this stuff now at least. Drew another Karn, so that's pretty cool. We can wish for LED, cast Karn, play LED. No, we're gonna get ported next turn though, so we can't get there. Might just want to wish for Crypt, Crypt them and pass. Slow them down. Their hand is port. Stage field maze of it now. Yeah, let's crypt them. Don't think I want to cast this other Karn. Kind of wastes this pedal. We don't need it. But we're going to get ported next turn, which means we're down on mana, which is really bad for us. I guess we could, if we cast the Karn now, wish for LED, play LED. Then we have the ability to rip a land and just lattice. That's probably correct. Because we're going to get ported down. It's going to be bad for us for a while. No, we can't just rip a land. We have to rip a soul land because we have to lose this pedal. It's probably still worth it, though.
their plan is probably try to prevent me from casting spells, lock up my hand to make some... Oh, wow, they just ripped a life from the loam off the top. Jesus. That sucks real bad for me. Just rip a soul land off the top. Easy, yep. Top deck for a top deck, I guess. Yeah, opponent's really dead there. There's there's a world that, like, we have to rip a lot of four drops in a row. No, because we can just make the uh, thing a 6-6, six, six too. I was thinking of a world where we, like, draw, like, four consecutive four drops, and they, like, get field going. They'd make a couple zombies and then try to, like, attack down the crown or something, but it'll have plused up too high, and we can make a 6-6 six, six every turn and just attack them, so they're probably dead. Anyway. The lands matchup, huh? Some number of plows is probably correct. Chalice. Uh, I hate chalice in this matchup. It's really awkward. Sometimes it's really strong. Like putting a chalice on two in this matchup can be pretty powerful. But there are a lot of things you can do with four mana that are like crushing your land's opponents. Plows usually fine because it like stalls the merit lage kills. Mentor in this matchup is also like pretty lackluster, though. It's just really bad against Punishing Fire and Tabernacle. I could see doing this. Probably fine. I wonder if I'm supposed to like actually keep all the chalices, cut all the mentors, and cut like a couple of other random stuff. This hand has nothing really. I'm gonna move six. This hand doesn't really do anything. I think we want more lands in our opening hand against lands. Mana is pretty prevalent. Alright, this hand does a turn two Cyanoverza. We are bottoming this Opal, I believe. Doesn't really do anything with our hand. We can get it online eventually, and it is mana, but I think the rest of our cards are probably more important. I'd value a redraw over having this Mox Opal as well. So we'll keep this. Bottom the Opal. Here. That port makes me sad. I'm gonna leave with Ancient Tomb still. They'll just port me. That's life, but especially with the, now they have this other Ancient Tomb, it's even better. Also, cycle this bobble. P fire my face. Oh, dang, they got me. She drawing over their opponent. A punishing fire. Neat. A wasteland. That's also rude. Wow, playing out the tracker, huh? Not porting me or wasteland me? That might. I guess they have a punishing fire. So I can threaten my Karn pretty well. You can threaten that Karn as well. We could Karn Great Creator f and empty our hand for Glass Casket and Glass Casket the Tracker. They have two cards in hand. Emptying my hand feels really shitty, but letting this Tracker... I guess we can we can always kill the Tracker later, but can we against Rashad and Port Wasteland? This might be my only window. Scion certainly sucks here. I'd really enjoy playing a uh, Mystic Forge right now. I don't have anything else on the sideboard, right? It would be either bridge or uh, or glass casket. Glass casket is better than bridge here because they're nowhere near the combo, and this thing would just still generate a bunch of clues and draw them a bunch of cards. I think, yeah, the plan is to glass casket this. We also do have to get a card in play, turn off this mox diamond, so that's pretty good. It's 
feel like this Tower Strike was really aggressive when they just could have wastelanded me or ported me. So let's make three white. Minus two. Good. Glass casket. Cast it. Hope they don't have artifact removal. I guess they're down on colored mana here, so. They have Punishing Fire and two other cards in hand. Yep, that tracks. here um i don't want to put my card to one and like minus for something especially with this punishing fire play i think really i want to go get anyway so let's just pop their diamond uh-oh that's a grove that will slowly ping down my karn which can be a concern it was like one turn too early to oh never mind they're porting instead of p firing my car and i guess that kind of makes some i have one card man i don't know how much sense that makes because now we might be able to get my car out of range of the punishing fire and get like a torment script in play And a city traders. Dodge bolt on looter scooter because my copies got lost in the mail and still refunded me. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm gonna play with this pedal to hold up this source of plowshares, I think, and also to play around like uh, a possible sphere top deck or something. I don't really want to play the city traders because it's just really bad in this Rashadon port. I think I'm just going to keep plussing up this Karn. Maybe next turn we wish for the Crypt or something. Maybe this turn we wish for the Crypt. It's really bad if they have another mana source, though, and they can P-Fire and, and but hold up Grove by back. Although I guess that just kind of counters it. Eh. We'll plus for one more turn here. Playing the City would unlock three mana for me so there's potential that maybe we wanted to like wish for oh dear this is bad oh i f6 too so i didn't float any mana i was not playing around force of vigor the last two cards so i can't plow the uh tracker i could have floated a white oh god that f6 is gonna bite me real bad we probably just lose the game now I think I didn't minus the Karn this turn, at least. Ah, uh, so we're holding the Dark Depths to play post-tracker. They're sitting on the Force of here, I guess. Yeah, this sucks. Definitely gonna lose this game, like, specifically because we have six through that turn. Unless we find something real good right now. That is not a white source deck. Can we wish for something relevant here? I think we just have to wish for the Tormont script. Right? Can't realistically blister this thing. We could shoot the clue. Force them to use next turn attacking and P firing down the, the Karn. That might actually be the play. more mana for us if we top deck something good. Yeah, 
Yeesh. To, into Wasteland top deck. Unfortunate, for sure. It's now to clear the Karn, they have to at least P fire. I was hoping that means that we didn't get ported this turn, but it did not. They did. They do have this Punishing Fire at hand, right? They're not casting it. Still not worth playing this city, I don't think. Pretty sure they drew that Punishing Fire. They never shuffled this whole game, so... I don't know. down. Double port me again. Jeez. Opponent is having a lot better top decks than I am. That is for sure. Their last card hand is Punishing Fire. They just refuse to cast it on my card, I guess. If we draw anything here, we could draw... Petal plus... Um, salvagers might do something. Oh, at least we can clear this tracker. Opponent has a silver library though, which just also sucks a lot of shit. The yeah, opponent should be definitely just a ancestral recalling every turn. Another Rashadon port, port, just double port me. some lands here. We need to top deck like exactly Oriox Salvagers or something. Don't even know if that does it anymore because they might have enough find enough red sources to like P fire it to death. Yeah they already did right now they need a third red source to P fire my Salvagers. Yeah there's probably just like Wasteland Port Port unless they do something relevant as the last card to cast here. Okay. They can't triple port, right? Oh, they can. Never mind. Yeah, you can triple port, then that's fine. Alright, we're getting there. Fortunately, next turn just probably involves them hitting another land drop and then waste landing me and then and then triple porting me or whatever, which means we still can't cast the salvagers. Also, they're one red source off of just being able to clear the salvagers, so we need to have a ton of free mana somehow. We need them to just like not mana deny me for some ungodly reason. Ah, uh, yeah, that's bad. This means wasteland triple port. This. I'm not gonna really have any instance this game. I can always un, un auto yield do it, but it's burning a bunch of my clock. We have a game three to play. Ooh. Are they just trying to kill me? They're just gonna get another wasteland? Okay.
Don't want to play the City of Traitors. I'm just in the face of all this, so we will just pass the turn. Not out of the... We're not totally dead yet. We're mostly dead. Put him at six. And put him just needs to go to two. And we can just the list of them. Just get him. Oh, there's the stage. All right, we're dead. Put him can just wasteland all those. And port my two... Can they... I can only port one land and then make a 20-20. That game, I think, is just like a landslide win if we did not have six of that turn, which sucks, but that's life. That is certainly the motto of life. Um, don't really like Chalice, especially with stuff like Force of Vigor. Having less artifacts that sit in play and this can be exposed like that seems pretty relevant. F6 is for chumps. F6 is for lazy people, like like me. Also people that like try to... Uh, people that waste a bunch of time talking about what they're doing and not doing it, and then needing to speed up their, their own gameplay. By just ignoring everything their opponent does. Um, yeah, I think we're just leaving the sideboard same as. This hand has a turn to not kill. I guess we turn to a Carnegie Crater or something. Gonna play out this pedal in case. Uh, I'm gonna check out both of these things in case of like a turn one sphere. The mom just kept seven. Sphere is really bad for me. This is also really bad for me if they just like force a vigor my LED in my pedal. If we just play the pedal. Like, we can't cast a 4-drop next turn anyway, if they do sphere me. It's just top deck walking ballista. Dang. Unlucky. Um, which Karn's better here? They went Grove Go. It's probably a great creator, right? The great creator just finds me the things that I need to kill my opponent with. Except for the fourth mana source, obviously, but. We also just set up two lattice lock them, right? We can just play Karn. Just even like plus it if we want. Do we want a minus? <clears throat> we could minus for a crypt. I'm sure that they kept seven and just went gro Grove Go. Like, they have something else that they're doing here. But they can't uh, snipe. Do you just win? Uh, no, we don't have enough mana to lattice lock them right now. Like, we could wish for an LED, then we have enough mana to lattice lock them, but then we can't wish for the lattice, right? We could have, like, played Salvagers and LED to make infinite mana. I guess we could have drawn infinite cards. Yeah, I didn't think about theirs as possible. That plays poorly around exactly crop rotation, which is something that they might have as well, though. If they, like, crop rotate and exile me, then I just discard my whole hand. I think this line is also fine. They, like, they kept a 7 that doesn't have, like, an immediate hate card, which is my worry. Which means that they could just easily be holding out, like, crop rotate for bog here. Yeah, I think we're just going to plus this Karn. It's really hard for them to get this Karn off the board. Don't think I want to expose the LED to a possible force as well. I think we'll just pass. There's a chance I wanted the second LED, though. Not necessarily way better. They could have nothing, and like we could have just, like, just demolished them, right? Yeah, this is the reason I kind of was thinking about second LED, just so we can set up a... Uh, Lattice lock anyway, but they have a dark depths in hand. 
Well, those are not good draws. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to play either of these Lion's Eye Diamonds, I don't think, because of Force. It's bad against Sphere. Really think they would have played Sphere by now. Also, we can eventually kill a Sphere with the Karn anyway. We really want these Diamonds to stay in my hand to protect them from Force of Vigor. But they also just keep leaving up this green mana, which could very well mean a uh, crop rotation. to wish for here. Like, if they do just, like, land Sphere me, I guess we just plus up the Karn, eventually find some more mana, and then we can animate their Karn and wish for, uh, Glass Casket to, to eat it. Also, we could potentially just get to seven, we could start casting abilities, get to seven mana, and just, like, lattice them anyway. Yeah, see. Rotation was certainly a concern. Might be like a Rashadon Port here or something. But Rashadon Port doesn't beat double LED in hand. They don't know about the second LED, so. Yeah, if they just pour me this turn, then they just die. Yep. They can't force a vigor the the lattice because they can't do it until it resolves. And if when it resolves, they don't have any green cards in their hand because it turns all the cards they're in colorless. So you can't force a vigor the combo. Yep, that doesn't do anything anyway. We just crack this LED in response. Did not... My brain didn't register the fact that we did have the Bowerman kill, because my brain was still on the, oh, we don't actually have the kill from last turn. But, I, I, yeah, I don't think I would have went for it into a single green open mana when my opponent, like, kept a seven-card hand and didn't, like, turn one sphere me or something. It seems that they like, had some other forms of hate, probably in stuff like Crop Rotation and Force of Vigor, so definitely not worth discarding my whole hand and potentially just getting completely destroyed by... Uh, Crop rotation for bog. All right. Um, unfortunately, we can't turn on this chalice without blowing our pedal. Because we're down on artifacts. And if we blow the pedal, it means that we can't. We're one artifact away from... Uh, Get our opal online to play a salvagers or a car in the ball long term. I think turn one, chalice on one on the blind is just really good. I guess we could, like, go city. That's probably the correct, right? City, chalice on one. Next turn we have, uh, we can even opal pedal. We might not even need to play the planes and blow up our city. Yeah, it's probably city, chalice. City, Ellie. No, they can't daze me because we're on the play. So yeah, just city, chalice. Next turn we have the potential to cast Karn or Salvagers.
Yeah. Cool. Hopefully this is a good matchup for Chalice of Void. Um, potentially not. This is just turbo depths, right? I think I would just want to uh, cast my Karn the Great Creator here, turn off this Lotus Petal. Try to set it for our Salvagers as well. I think I'm gonna cast it off of the Lotus, our Lotus Petal here. I'm gonna go Opal Petal Karn save the planes because the next turn then we'll have the ability to use Oval City planes like cast salvagers and like wish for an LED or something. Um, I almost just immediately played the <laughs> the snow guard planes after saying all that. I kind of also don't want to crack this Mishra's bauble because it's our third artifact for the Opal next turn. I guess it depends on what we wish for here. So this, this, this. I guess we could just wish for an LED with this Karn, right? And then that returns on our thing. Uh, I'll give you a question in a second. Font, font, font. Yeah, just wish for an LED for the salvagers. I'm gonna hold it in my hand in case of abrupt decay. Although they're a million mana away from casting that. What are you drawing over there? A dark depths. Could be scarier. You could have two elder spirit guides. That actually be pretty bad. We can't beat two elder spirit guides without like doing something stupid with our Karn instead of uh, bomb remaining them. I guess we, no, no, we kill him this turn. Yeah. Because we have all the pieces here. We go float mana, play LED, play planes, four mana, salvagers, LED a million times, and then we can wish for the plus to kill him this turn. We're good. Um, so the ancient, the planes ancient end split, I'm... So a bunch of people were talking about it in the Barman Discord when Ren got banned, and I'm not super into it. I think Nullrod and uh, uh, whatever, Collector Oof, are super devastating and i don't want to like exacerbate that exacerbate that with going down to two possible sources ghost quarter okay this is just lands but lotus petal what i don't know ghost quarter can no they play ghost quarter in turbo turbo depths right because you can't you want to name wasteland because anything else never mind yeah but anyway um so if you go, if you play like a bunch of ancient dens, it makes your mox opals and stuff better. But it makes your we can just lattice my opponent now. It makes your like sideboard white cards a lot worse to think that try to kill null rods and all that. Uh, or we can just sellers them. I guess latticing them is faster, right? We don't have to like click a million times. Yeah, I, I like playing zero Ancient Dens. I guess you don't have two, you have like four, because you play some Caracas too, but... Um, I guess I probably should have played my Caracas out. They're dying anyway, so... We're gonna get so wrecked by Elvish Spirit Guide Crop Rotation for uh, Dry Harbor here. Float Mana. Crack LED. I'm gonna get so punished for doing this line instead of the line that just kills them because I wanted to click less. Yes, nice. Sorry, they died. We did it. Not punished. In real life, I definitely would have uh, gone for the Bomberman kill, but sometimes you. Yeah, you take those you take those beats sometimes on Moto to, to save yourself a bunch of clicks if the opponent doesn't wanna or opponent wants to make you go through it. But yeah. I'm not a huge Ancient Den fan. I'm even like trying some Karn Cyanoverza, and even then, like, I don't know. Ancient Den just 
does not really interest me that much. Just so bad against, like, Nolra. It's bad against Oko, too. They can elk your land or, like, steal your land and stuff. It's just... It's bad against... A, it's bad in, like, Karn the Great Creator mirrors. There are just so many ways the Ancient End punishes you, and, like, the, the, like, the upsides seem pretty marginal compared to those. Every every matchup boards in like a bunch of artifact removal and stuff. You get like your uh, your ancient dead ancient grudge or something. It's just the worst feeling. All right, so we're playing against turbo turbo depths, like the really fast ones. They play petals and stuff instead of mox diamonds. So we probably want. I usually board in the glass casket in this matchup because of their like idiot creatures. And if you're wishing you and you have mana, you're still wishing for like a staring bridge anyway. Um, so this is probably fine. We can cut Mystic Forge. Probably Scions, too. They're just really slow. Oh, we're supposed to cut Chalices. Never mind. So we're leaving in these Scions and cutting the really slow cards. Possible I want the Disenchants more than I want. Yeah, I probably actually do want the Disenchants. They have Needles. They could, like, try to Needle the combo or my Karns and stuff. Wow, this hand seems really tempting. We're on the draw. This hand probably doesn't even beat. Like, this is actual, like, fast turbo depths, too. This hand has, like, potential for a turn two mentor and four triggers that probably, like, might not even kill my, like, beat my opponent in time. They kept seven. We have three redraws. But then our mentor gets worse with every redraw we cast. What are we looking for in a six, though? Just, like, a really fast kill with a bunch of mana? Hmm. Let's keep this. What's the worst that could happen? Turn one Thossies? Then we just get three redraws. Deal. Herboric Scary, because it threatens the turn two kill. Just Dark Depths Hex Mage get you. Yeah, Thoughtsy is one of the reasons I'm not a fan of mulliganing against like these decks anyway. Like, if I mold a 6, I'm going to hand with a single threat, and then just gets thought seized. At least this hand just has a bunch of redraws. It has mana. It's got a Lion's Eye Diamond. Wow. That was a choice. Let's draw a Soul Land. Petal. Take it. Does this mean I don't play any Bobbles? Because I have the potential to play Second Cavern, Petal, Mentor, Bobble, Bobble, Bobble. You know you're in trouble if they leave Mentor. Yeah, they're taking the LED because, like, there's the potential for me to, like, rip like soul land salvagers and kill them <laughs> maybe that's cause for me to like actually just want me to crack all these baubles and not go in on the mentor plan i'm not actually that like i'm actually kind of into that plan of oh shit i need an answer for a merit like <laughs> they could have follow-up discard that's true In which case, taking the LED seems better than taking the Mentor. If we're dead, though, we definitely want to cycle these baubles. I'm playing these baubles. I think the upside's, like, pretty marginal. Worst case is that they don't have either, and we, like, get a bunch of redraws into potential other stuff for this Mentor anyway. I think I want to play my only, like, my only, my pedal here, too. They can't thought these way my white mana. Drawn crop rotation, sure. What are you drawing next turn? Not of this world. All right, well, that's scary. Well, I guess they might not be drawing that out of this world. Or we draw a bunch of lands and we look like a total doofus. Um, so if they have crop rotation for stage, no, they can't realistically kill me here. So we have another turn, <clears throat> which means we probably just want to get this Karn down and plus it. Trying to dig for answers, because then if we find an answer and they don't give it to us, we can minus the Karn afterwards. I think I'm going to city Karn Scion.
Plains and Caracas. All right, we can wish for a Caracas now. Notably, or not wish, but you, you guys know what I mean. But not if they draw this not of this world, the Caracas won't do anything anyway. Please fetch to deny me information, opponent. Yes. Shuffle away that not of this world. Beautiful. Dark Depths here, then. We're not dead, because we can wish for this Caracas. They have another Crop Rotation in hand, but Crop Rotation doesn't beat Caracas, so... <laughs> Jesus. All right, so we uh, down take this Karn, put the Caracas in our hand, cast a Monastery Mentor, <laughs> play Caracas. This, well, I guess this was the worst case with not going or, or ignoring the Mentor in our hand. Obviously, if they have not of this world, we just fucking die, but we couldn't beat that card, so. Yeah, I guess they have a, another not of this world. Yep. They got us good. Sideboarding time. What if we do want disenchance? Turn sign was okay there, honestly. It digs you to the spells that matter more than uh, Forge does, I think. Forge can't actually draw you anything to save you from the the, the merit lage. I guess it kind of draws some of the same rate as Karn does, though, because it doesn't draw you the good card. It draws you the good card next turn, which is kind of what Forge does, but I don't know. So there's a potential for Disenchance to, uh... Do you know the trend of J spells to active reclaimer? It's a bad play. <laughs> but it does sound like a bad play. It sounds like a very poor choice. Let's just run it back. Maybe I want the chalices in on the play. A question that has long been pondered amongst Bonner Rand players is like Chalice of the Void versus the Depth Sticks. Because it's so bad against Hex Mage. And it's like, in general, not great when you're on the draw. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good play if you know they're getting stepped. And you factor that into your calculations. A bad play when you're just like, oh, I'll just bounce their reclaimer. What are they going to do? How are they going to stop that one? Chalice on stuff for this big game. Hey, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Maybe you're going off with salvagers, but you don't have, you have, and you have like a crocus up, but you don't have an outlet for it. You just really need to put that chalice on seven to protect from the, uh, not of this world. You never know. It did not help that we drew like a shizillion lands there. <laughs> We plussed the Karn into two lands, like, drew three lands off of Bobble Triggers. Alright, I would love to play for 
Spiders. This hand doesn't do anything. It gets three redraws. It has mana in it. We, our hands are really good against Thought Seas, I'll tell you that. You can tell us fine out of it. Other than it shutting after combat with Hexmage. Yeah, I think that's definitely the worst detriment. Like, if Hexmage only targeted their own permanence, I think Jealous is a perfectly reasonable card to leave in, especially on the draw. Or even on the draw, I mean. That being said, I think it might still be worth it on the play in some matchups. So I need three redraws. Has an act has active three mana. And is really good against the card Thought Seas. What could possibly go wrong? I kind of like don't want to play the land to bait them into Thought Seas and Eve, but I know that that's a terrible play. Because <laughs> we need to draw like the, the fourth mana source and a, a four drop to cast. But it would be really funny. Bobble. 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 Petal. Oh. <laughs> LED. <laughs> Go. Storm count six. Go. Thought sees this. Oh, drawing step. Cool. <sighs> Alright, so we know three of the cards out of their hand here. Alright, alright. Yeah, payoff. Love to see it. Certainly a good one. four mana here so we can't lattice them but we definitely threaten lattice next turn um i think i just kind of want to plus this car and keep it out of like random idiot range maybe not three unknowns in hand maybe i'll minus this for something oh, do i play it do i minus it for just another led and play it i guess doesn't really do anything though. Just get a plus. They can't even like trophy my Karn if they have trophies. That like a elvish spirit guide or something. and Flatus opponent. They can Hexmage it. Oh, that's true, yeah. Well, they, again, they would need, uh, they need Urborg. Urborg plus Hexmage is, like, two of the last three cards in their hand, which could definitely punish me. But, like, what am I wish? Should I, should, like, wish for an insurance policy and not cast it is a reasonable option? Like, wish for the Mystic Forge or something? Like, what's the worst that happens? My car dies. Or they could, I guess Crop Protection also does it. Oh, nice Inquisition opponent. They had, uh, they had the Bayou, so Crop Protection plus Hex Mage also did it. Yeah. I think Wishing for an Insurance Policy would have been okay there. But yeah, they're just fucking dead. Wish for Bridge. That's not unreasonable. 
force them to have a thought seize. No, they're just dead, though. We don't even have to crack our LED. Can you beat this? They cannot. We did it! Yeah, I think wish for an insurance policy is a pretty reasonable line there. Does Turbo Depths play uh, Dryad Armors all the time? I don't think so, right? Do they play the non-zero amount of time, though? Because if that's the case, then, like, minusing twice is just really, really bad against crop rotation, right? But I don't think Dryad Armor is, like, a real card. Hand's really mopey. Especially on the draw. And we'll get a six. Hand doesn't do anything. We can probably get a better six than this. Now this hand does stuff. Um, we could turn one mentor thing, 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 if we put away the planes. But sounds ambitious. More realistically, we have turn two mentor thing, 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 and we put away one of these zeros. So I guess put away the opal. So we're gonna crack the two bobbles and have the pedal. Oh, we got devs place armor, but yeah, I don't. Th yeah, I don't think that like most turbo dev decks are like on are on armor. If anything, I think they play. I guess no. You'd probably play that one. Yeah, we still have the option of like. City pedal mentor thing thing if we want to, depending on what our opponent's doing. There could be a lot of things. Infect comes to mind. Really don't want to get dazed. It's potential for me to actually like play the pedal out before the mentor. Yeah, no no one's on edicts is another thing. Like everyone's on bounce spells to beat uh to beat Merit Lage now, so it makes Dryder even worse. I've not seen like the, the sacrifice fodder for a long time. I think we're just gonna pass here. If there are an infect, we could definitely be in for a bad time, but also we don't want to just like get our mentor dazed for no reason. And after going all in. So I think the next turn might just be City Pedal Mentor three bobbles. But it could also not be on Infect. They could be on some, like, Bant Oko pile or something or other. That's not an Infect land. That's a weird card in your Noble Hierarch deck. Alright. Yeah, definitely playing around days now. Is there a double days? No, we have three cards in hand. They could obviously have a removal spell of some sort here. Oh, they don't. All right, they're super dead. Pretty solid turn two, I would say. Delver flipping. A uh, force wall. A little bit late for that one. I'm not gonna lie to you. They still want to draw it. Which is kind of weird. I can't imagine force wall is a good card in the sports days. <laughs> sure. Play like a Trinity Nemesis here. Four mana. Green center for three. Oh dear. Uh, 
I should probably crack in case of, like, this is, like, a bluff and, like, a random main deck collector oof, right? There's no reason not to crack here. I guess more information because they're going to shuffle afterwards, but I don't really think information is important here. Like, bluffing something that was, like, Leovold? Oh, yeah, that actually tracks. So I shouldn't actually crack. Leovold seems like a problem. I mean, kind of. We still get... We only get to draw one card. I should have cracked... I don't know. Well, definitely not considering Leopold, though, or Green Sun Zenith. I guess Green Sun Zenith makes sense to the Hierarch deck, though. So cracking was probably wrong, because this is definitely a Leopold. Which means we don't get to draw our card. Which means we shouldn't crack more, though. Okay, we just let this resolve. Yeah, it wouldn't be Bluff Oof, because this Wasteland's actually, like, pretty relevant here. spell the cast so we can't even attack into the Leo. I think cracking bobbles here is fine for me, trading card for card. What did I crack? Mishra's so drawing this drop? Yeah. I think I want to just draw more cards, so each one I can't draw more than one card each turn, so we can draw a card on their turn if we target them this turn, so yeah. You can bobble yourselves. Oh yeah, we could just bobble ourselves, can't we? And they don't get a uh, trigger. Yeah, that's the smart play. What are we drawing? I always forget Bobbles can target yourself. I like never. I don't do that nearly enough. It makes it a little, it's a lot less relevant when you don't really have consistent shuffle effects in your deck, but well, it can be relevant. I also didn't attack with their Insectal Vibration last turn, which is kind of wild. Their end is Trop Force, I believe. Oh, yeah, they're super toast now. Triggers. Yeah, we did it. Despite my horrible play into that Green Sun Zenith. We did it. So opponent's just playing a bug, potentially four color Delver. Like a weird like Delver with like a Green Sun package. Like we don't know if they have white or if they're just playing Noble Hierarch is the best mana dork they have access to. Probably more bug, maybe a light white splash, but I think we're just gonna be boarding it. Eh, they have like a Leo, which is pretty obnoxious. Maybe we're supposed to bring in like cast out too. Look at all this slow shit. The classic noble Delver Leo Zenith. Yeah, exactly. That classic strategy. A tale as old as time. I'm supposed to cut Scions in this matchup. Scion gets like reasonably beefy. Definitely concerned about Collector Oof. So, like, I think I want more things that are good against Oof. So that means I have to shave down on, like, like, baubles and mana, maybe. Like this. Let's see a Priest or two. Oh, I get a Priest against Zenith? I don't know. Seems, like, kind of weak. I like boarding in Priest versus Maverick, but I don't know. Kind of depends on the composition of our opponent's deck and whole, right? Dog has graced us with her benevolent presence. Let's just try this and see more of their deck. Um, slow, but Sword Flashers is a very powerful card. Cavern of Souls is traditionally very good in Delver matchups in general. The same as a keep. Yeah, Zenith not, not being a four of, luckily. Wow, they got the Arbor in there, too. I mean, it makes sense. That just seems kind of wild that they put Delvers in this deck. 
probably not supposed to bolt the bird here. Let's put out this bobble, though. Am I supposed to bobble them on my turn in case of turn two Leopold? Also ambushes Oof in combat. I don't think that's, like, that big of a benefit, realistically. Uh, bobbling on their turn sucks against Thoughtseize, but doesn't suck that badly, because, like, we already have a bunch of good hits anyway. Drawing a Brook Decay, sure. <coughs> I guess we don't really need to play on Leo these turns, because we have this Plow, but I also probably wouldn't even plow the Leo there into a Daze. So... Put this cavern on Human. I'm gonna cast a plow on this Tarmogoyf. And Urza's bobble them. Curious about their blue card count for force of the yeah, I don't know. I'm curious about a lot of their deck building decisions. I feel like they could just cut the Delvers out of their deck, and they'd have mostly good magic cards. Right. Or mostly like magic cards that kind of make sense in the same deck. Delvers really just kind of feel like the oddball card here. We have a lot of mana. I really want to find like Lion's Eye Diamond. There's a Delver. Aaron might not have this decay, they might have shuffled it away after not seeing. Not not seeing the chalice, but yeah, it seems like the book goes from, from the GB, but also just has Delver of Secrets. <laughs> that, that was my thoughts. Ooh, that's an alliance I diamond, huh? Well, well. How do we want to do this? We could just try to salvage them draw infinite cards. They have three cards in hand. Not beating Force of Will because they forced the LED after like the first crack. We can um like pedal Swords Pleasures the Delver beforehand, or just plow the Delver. Like, it's hard for them to get the Salvagers itself off the board, right? Without, like, an, an Oko on their turn. It's, like, Force plus Oko or something, but that's every single card in their hand. Potentially a, uh, um, Abrupt Decay. The problem with plotting the Delver is that it doesn't play around Surgical Extraction, which is, like, a card that people love to board against Bomberman for no good reason. But I try to play around it, like, all the time. We could just let the Delver live and just try to combo them. Excuse me, kitty. Do you mind? We could just LED pedal salvagers. Push answer salvagers. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Push less good with Delver of Secrets in your deck, but I have seen pushes. We'll just wait a turn. We're like not under any pressure here. We're under the pressure of the card Thought Seize. And I guess stuff like Collector Oof, but. We could just go land go and like plow the Delver and stuff and wait. Turn. Can you stop, kitty? Like, there are definitely times where you're supposed to just slam your foot on the gas pedal and just, like, make them dead. Bait them into burning a shuffle effect if you upkeep the plow. I don't understand the logic. What, what? Oh, Bert tried to bait them into burning the delta off of the Delver Scry so that we don't have to play around, uh, having this fatal push up to uh fate or having the pollute dealt up to fatal push me not un unreasonable yeah i think i'm just gonna go land joe hey you mind kitty or, well, yeah it's definitely narrow Just did 
them cowards. <laughs> I am a coward. Maybe I should just dead them. They probably have this abrupt key in hand, and they have two cards left. I probably should just dead them. Yeah, let's dead them. We're here to dead them. They have a lot of draws, like cantrips and bathoses and stuff that punish me more than just like the three random cards in their hand right now. Yeah, we're gonna play around surgical and the plow here. Pest, and I have two salvagers kill my opponent with baubles. Well, we have 15 minutes to do so, and we're at 17 life, so not a lot of pressure. We don't have to draw that many cards. Is Force Negation on LED consideration? It's the same thing as Force of Will, except it exiles my LED forever, which sucks more, obviously. But, uh, not really, no. Having, if they Force Negation the LED, we just, when we have our hold hand discarded, it, it sucks, but we also still have Salvagers and a bunch of mana and, like, bobbles in the yard to start buying back. It's, like, not the end of the world. is how many cards are we drawing here? Like 10, 15 ought to be probably good enough. We have 14 minutes. That's not better. Like we could definitely just try to lock up the kill next turn. The way I see it is that like our odds of winning this game we're probably not getting better by giving them more draw steps. They have a lot of draws that just, like, cantrips into stuff or stuff to mess with my things, like Collector Oofs or Leovolds. The fact that we don't have the Ballista kill, too. The fact that we have the Bobble kill means, like, if they get Leovold online, that sucks for us. They actually do find removal spells if they Thought Seize us. What would we consider about it? We We stopping here. Thirty mana. Thirty mana plus LED in play gives us fifteen draws, right? That's probably good enough. Abrupt decay opponent. <laughs> Let me see your third card. Drawing it all plays around oof better. Yeah, but to click so many times to do that. Show me your third card, opponent. There we go. Their end is <laughs> drop under MC decay. Sure. What's your top card looking like? A green sun zenith. Oh dang, that's actually kind of annoying. 
Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> They're actually just fucking drawing the screen so they have, have to draw more magic cards. <laughs> Why you gotta do me like this? I gotta make more mana. Maybe they'll deny the information. We can hope, but I'm not gonna. Uh. I was making talk with. Yeah, Dog did show up briefly. She's somewhere. She was being a pest earlier. Batting at the window like she does, but I'll check where on her whereabouts in a second. Temo is legit winning. I mean, definitely not at this point. We have eleven minutes on the clock, and we're going to draw twenty like twenty plus cards. Like it's not an act like actually a legitimate win con here. How's it going? Well, we're murdering our opponent here. It's pretty good. It's a matter of how many cards I want to draw into a potential Green Sun Zenith. Ball be your top card, maybe you have a plow. Alright, I guess that's fair. Let me make an even number of mana, in case I get to stop. What is our top card? It's a Mistress Bobble. I've lost track of how many cards I'm drawing. I'm gonna say it's enough. I'm not gonna upkeep pop the LED because I don't need to. Because we're not gonna like draw into a plow that casts like they have a, they have a green something at the top of their deck, which is the the real thing I would want to plow. There's the effects area, and yeah, it's this bobble. Anyway, storm count sixty two. Ah, oh, we should got a sixty nine. You're right. Pop belly dinner supposed to be. I mean, you can't do that because then we discard our whole hand. Uh, I would like to always yield to Mistress Bobble Triggers. Wait, did that automatically auto yield to my to all my Bobble Triggers, not just the Mistress Bobble? Okay, sure. Uh, did we draw a way to kill a Click Roof? Yeah, we did. All right, we're good. Found it. Your dead opponent. Who's your favorite Pokemon in the new gen? Tough. I got a lot of there are a lot of good ones in the new gen. Appleton is a uh, wow, they just shuffled the green suns the other way? What are they trying to draw? What on earth could possibly be better than this green sun zenith? Wow, just make me go through all that work and then just don't even draw the zenith. Sure, alright, opponent. Thought seized. Oh, dang. You got me. You got me good. Appleton is great. I love Appleton. Poltegeist, too. Two of my faves. They're on my team. Oh, yeah. Oh, dang. You got me. Take the mentor. <laughs> Concede. Love it. Love everyone who just, like, thinks that they have a chance of beating, like, uh, Bomberman drawing 20 cards. Like, I, I understand there are cases where you're not supposed to concede to the combo because, like, there's a chance you can still beat them drawing their whole deck even. Like, when you're playing in Storm or when you're, like, a, a very low life total versus Delver and there's a chance they could, like, find the lethal bolt and kill you. But, like, what is your plan? What's your plan? <laughs> what was my opponent's plan? Cast... If you can cast Demonic Tutor and, like, have a reasonable chance of winning that game... Cast a free Demonic Tutor, like, sure, go for it. <laughs> oh god, yeah, I picked, I picked, uh, Sobble, very disappointing the evolutions. Got my Sobble level 15, immediately boxed it. 
not dealing with that shit. Anyway, let's uh, keep going here. A little weird Delver deck for sure. Like, if you could look me in the eye and tell me there is a card in my deck that I can draw this turn and potentially win this game, like, and beat the 20 cards you drew, then sure. Go for it. Don't concede. Maybe they thought they needed to find trophy. But, like, I'm at 17 and just drew 20 cards. The Assassin's Trophy's not going to win you this game. Even if I don't have the immediate combo, I have 20 cards in my hand. Font, font, font. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. I would do want a tutor for oof. Yeah, like, that's that's the play. So either they didn't have oof, or they thought there was a better card in their deck than Green Sun's anything for oof. It did not work out for them. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, if Green Sun is not the card you're trying to demonic tutor for, then what what's the card you're looking for? What's up? Well, we're doing pretty good today, Lasco. We're three right now. It's pretty good. <laughs> nice cosmic. Brainstorm into oof plus force to protect. Sure, I think we also could have beat that, but sure. <laughs> Actually, maybe not. I think we only drew the one plow, but like we could still just like cast like the carnage shit in our hand. Oh, yeah, I have not seen you around in a while. How have you been? Alright, this hand has. This hand's a little bit mm, bad. Potential for some craziness with a lot of powerful four drops if we could find another land. We're on the draw. We could just go Plains Bobble. But that leads us to just casting uh, like a powerful four drop on turn three, which is like on the draw. Not really where you want to be in Legacy. Uh, this hand looks a little bit better. We have Salvager's Combo and a Mentor. I like all this. We're going to opal to the bottom we have potential for turn two mentor turn three lethal so opal doesn't really do anything besides synergize with the mentor so we need all this other stuff fairy gym told me i needed more pink all right thalsies ponder sure could be storm could be like a delver deck could be like just blue black x stuff what is bomberman uh bomberman's a legacy deck that is named after oriox salvagers and lion's eye diamond combo which makes infinite mana they used to kill with pyrite spell bomb which is where the name bomberman came from i think we're gonna lead with tomb not really a thing we could draw potentially i guess if we draw a car Play it if they're on storm. Yeah, now you just play Walking Ballista instead of a uh, Pirate Spell Bomb because it's just a much better card. But keep. Oh, that's not the land I expected from that fetch. All right. Oh, all right. Well, let's hope this doesn't hit my two good cards. But given my track record with him to Turok. Well, that could have gone worse. It is a pretty cool deck. That him to Turok definitely could have been worse for me. Still don't know what my opponent's doing, but now we just want to draw, like, Walking Ballista. Chalice? It's probably just Cavern Chalice on one here. Hope to top deck Walking Ballista or something. Cavern human chalice of the void on pixie blows one four colors no control do they play a scrubland in the deck so 
the wildest turn two fall off after Misty Underground Sea Ponder. You're not wrong. Can I force all this? Maybe I should have done that in opposite order. Incentivize them to not burn a force. So now let's just top deck walking ballista. Can you rock me again? Oh, that's completely fine. That resolves opponent. You got me. Wasn't force colors no control? Splashing red in the sideboard with like a single sideboard Volk though. It was like it was like bug plus white and like a single Volk and Rebs in the sideboard. Yes, skill game. All right. Now let's hope they don't have a forceful for my LED. Actually, no, we beat that still, so yeah, we're fine. As long as they let this resolve first. Yeah, LED first. Because we just need to resolve the first time to win. Yeah, it has to be force of negation now. And we're off to the races. Maybe my opponent will concede. Maybe they won't. Yeah, drew like a skilled magician. Exactly. Why do you, why do people even play cantrips? Just draw the good card. Holding W, saves a click, and auto sacks for white, really? Hold W. Oh shit, that's dope. Can I auto pay for the, the extra mana? I hate having to click on the mana pool, I don't know how to auto pay that. Wow, this is just this is mind blowing. It auto taps the source for the first option. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's like a different button I could hold down to auto pay my mana. He must have something. Like, they're dead though. They can't actually have anything. There's nothing in. They have five cards in their hand, and none of them can beat. can win them this game, realistically. They could like force all my ballista and waste a bunch of my time. Or they just like don't want to concede for whatever reason. Yeah. People on Moto, especially in League, just like don't like to concede because they don't value their own time. Like if you didn't make extra. Yeah, we're gonna I always try to end the combo with an LED in play. Whoops, right about holding down the W. Got distracted. So we just need to make 30, 38 mana. Yeah, this W thing is uh, really nice. So even one click is pretty big when you have to do the same click 60 times. They just pause there, so like they are they actually just gonna like force hold my my ballista? Make me do it again. I'm instinctively clicking on the LED twice. <laughs> just from muscle memory, but I don't have to. Clicking it once. Yeah. The one thing I really want to find to change my life is a shortcut that lets me auto like pay mana with whatever's floating. Like having to click on my mana pool is the worst. Clicking on the LED twice was never like that big a deal. Because it was like the mouse was in the exact same spot every time, but having to then move to another distinct location on the on the hey, look at that! 
The 29th mana, of course, is what did it. When I decided that they valued their time a little bit. Also, I was not paying attention to what people were talking about with what deck my opponent is on. But I imagine this cast out is good and nothing else is. So we will cut a Lotus Petal for a cast out and call it a day. So I was just going to make a bunch of mana, buy back that Walking Ballista, and cast a Walking Ballista for 18 and kill them. For those of you at home desperately wondering, what my plan was. The Thomas Mardick from the GP? I don't know what that is. I just... <laughs> they might have been Googling Power Manless at that time. Fair. Yes, it makes sense. I mean, we saw four colors of things, so I imagine they're just astrolabes in my opponent's deck, and they're playing a bunch of bullshit fueled by astrolabe and oko and nonsense. It's like a pretty safe assumption. So yeah, probably just bringing in the cast out and bringing nothing else. have a bunch of color yeah i have to imagine they're five they're five color because they showed us every color but green and there's like no reason that they're not playing green this hand seems pretty decent. turn two chalice probably but multiple salvagers op is on bullshit yeah exactly like turn two chalice into turn three or x salvagers just as like a value engine we can like buy back bobble and stuff Play your Astrolabe. Draw like an Ancient Tomb. Nice. I'm such a good Magic player. Really just want to rip uh, a Karn off the top after that and just really rub it in. Dang. I guess I only get that wish once. Eh, we'll just play Planes here. Be happy. Play Salvagers next turn. They have to blow up my Chalice in order to plow it, and also we have a backup Salvagers. We just want to get like the draw engine online because our hand doesn't do anything currently. But depending on what our opponent does, we'll just jam the salvagers. They got a decay here. Or Oko. They got Oko my chalice. Tef. Oh, it's, it's a magic card, certainly. So that's pretty annoying. Next turn now they can bounce my chalice and then plow my salvagers. Let's draw our card through what we're doing here. Another bobble. We want to draw at sorcery speed because of the threat of something like Narset or Leovold. Our hand is filled up enough that I think playing around those is more relevant than playing around uh, like him to Tarox. They have five cards in hand. They're going to draw to six. They're going to bounce my chalice to seven. And they're going to apply my salvagers. I don't think I want to play my salvagers here. I think I'm just going to draw a card. I guess I should bobble them first, just in case we see something else that changes our mind. Nope, just force. Sure. I probably should have like played the cavern or something. Try to set up the ability to like sal uncountable salvagers plus buy back a bobble in the same turn. Probably should have played out cavern there. All right. Well, if they're just bouncing the chalice, we can just replay the chalice. Mm. 
But yeah, definitely should have played the cavern there, because then we could at least like replay the chalice and play the like city redeploy salvagers there. But they have the force of will in hand, so they're probably just gonna force a will my chalice on the rebound here. Six cards in hand. A Karn. Alright, well, Chalice baits this force, and then we can just city Karn. Or at least attempt to. Wow. Alright. Because if this Teferi just pluses it, can we get some minus again? <sighs> now we'll just play the Cavern out here. I'm going to try to finagle our Karn around a Force of Will is the next plan, I think. Because I was probably supposed to cast the Chalice off of the two Snow-Covered planes. Oh, that's bad. Do we top deck a... No, because they have a Force of Will, so we can't really top deck anything around all of them. Make a food so I can steal my thing, whatever it is now. We have five cards in hand, so my Karn is not resolving. Hmm. I feel like we're pretty dead here. I think our plan needs to be that they have actual, they have no blue cards with the Sports Wool, and my Karn resolves. So our Salvagers isn't doing shit. Our Salvagers is like going to maybe draw us a card if they don't crack the spell bomb in response. And then they can just like, they can take my salvagers, or they can bounce my chalice and plow my salvagers, and we can play another one after. They're never gonna force split. I think this turn has to be like Jam Karn. Yeah, Oko can steal salvagers. Wait, can it? Yeah, because it's power. Yeah, I always get it. But it's power because it can steal the elk that it makes. Yeah, Force Pitch Bonder. We feel pretty dead this game. If we top deck a Lion's Eye Diamond, there's a chance we're not dead here, right? We can double salvagers here. Obviously, they still have three other cards in hand. What's up, Felber? Oh, another Karn. Certainly not nothing. I mean, I guess I'm just going to cast another Karn here, see what happens. So yeah, this is fine. Plow my chalice in response. Sure. I don't even want here. Nothing. They can food token to kill my, they can animate their food token to kill my, to attack my Karn if I don't plus it here. We get a minus for LED and try to go that route. We have a ton of mana, so I think we can beat the spell bomb. I don't think we want to minus it this turn though. It's a danger if we don't, if they have something to get my Karn off the board. But I think just killing this food token and making them animate like their spell bomb or their astrolabe is fine. It's hard for them to get this card off the board without like an assassin's trophy. The three cards left in their hand. Plus, yeah, I think plusing on the food is my best bet here. If they elk down and attack me, down, attack the card down to three, we can still just go for the LED line next turn. Hey, get down from there. Dang cat. Psst, hey, beat it. Relevance 
and stuff. The card also shuts off the spell bomb if we can try to go off this following turn here. They do have four cards in hand, but we have the ability to cast two Oriox Salvagers, which can potentially beat that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana to cast two Salvagers. So we wish for the LED. Try to draw infinite cards here. I'm trying to figure out the best way to navigate this. We need to play both salvagers because otherwise they can just do something after we discard our hand of the LEDs. So we need to cast both salvagers here anyway. So step one is cast salvagers sans lions I diamond, I guess. Or sans cavern of souls, I guess. Because we can only cavern one anyway. So we do this. Because we can also play this mox opal. They have like four spells removal spell, we're never beating it to begin with. Step one accomplished. Now we'll make three white mana. Attempt to buy back this LED. They can't crack the spell bomb because the car is turning it off. We can beat a surgical extraction. Actually, yeah, we could. All right, so they brings a response, sure. Hey, we did it. Whew, that was a game. Definitely a toughie navigating around all those planeswalkers and stuff. Maybe a short stream. It's only 10.30. Are you going to combo there? Uh, we were going to draw basically infinite cards. We had two Urza's Bobbles in the graveyard. So while we didn't have the walking blow stuff for the immediate kill, we, yeah, we had to just basically draw our whole deck and kill them the following turn. And since my opponent had cast the Brainstorm there, they basically know how their turn is going to play out, and if they're able to beat infinite cards. Answer's likely no, even with those two Planeswalkers. So yeah, the, 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 the backdoor Bomberman kill is draw your deck minus some number of cards so you don't deck out with Urza's Bobble or Mishra's Bobble. The fact that Oko can steal Oriox Salvagers is a real pain, though. I thought I'd pick on activating Inner Soul Space Room. I don't think there's a reason to do that, right? All that does is, like, play into Surgicals and stuff. If they have the Surgical in hand, then we lose to it. What are they drawing off the Brainstorm that I'm... Because like, I can't go off the whole way in response to the Brainstorm because I need to cast this LED every turn, or every time. It doesn't, like, go back into play or anything. I do have to move it from my hand to the, to the battlefield. So I have to let the brainstorm resolve. Yeah. Plays around extirpate, I suppose. Yeah, no problem. 
Yeah, Oko is really good against a lot of cards. Blake Trustee, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Yeah, Oko is one of the reasons I talked about it at the uh, start of my stream. Is one of the reasons I kind of am interested in trying Karn Cyanaversa instead of uh, some of the Mystic Forges. Because uh, Mystic Forge just lines up so badly against Oko. And a lot of the grindy decks, both Miracles and the Blue Black X Piles, are both playing Okos. <laughs> So it's like your if your grindy card for the grindy matchups gets elk, it, it sucks a lot more. Let's see, I'd probably keep. Hope Chalison won't get against my opponent. Hard to pass up hands that just play a turn on Chalice to win Legacy. It just hoses so many decks. It also have like a follow up Chalice if they force will the first one. Sometimes you just die with these hands. Sometimes you just, like, go turn one Tomb Chalice and your opponent is, like, also a Chalice Levoid deck or they're, like, on Death and Taxes. Uh, those are the... You gotta play the hand you're dealt sometimes. Only solution against Walkers is Walker. Uh, card Scion of is a reasonable magic card. The solution against Ogre specifically is cards that don't get Elked. Which happen to be exactly uh, lands, planeswalkers, and enchantments. I'm probably supposed to cycle a bobble here. It gives away the information that I'm on Bomberman, but our hand doesn't do anything. Ace of the Mountain. Get some more info here. You on burn? Rabble Master. Oh no, we're on Chalice Mirror. That's bad. Makes my Chalice a lot worse. But at least they didn't have Chalice on zero. Let's try something good, please. These are good magic cards. Turn two Rabble could play the Cavern. Try to incentivize them to play a Blood Moon. I don't want to get Blood Moon, though, because I want to play my thing on three anyway. I mean, this Rob Master is obviously also very bad for my card, so maybe that's some incentive. I think I have to play the Salvagers here anyway, and then if they have Chandra, we just like, get fucked. Guess we could just Karn wish for LED and hope they don't have a Karn and just draw a billion cards. It's not an unreasonable plan. If six cards at hand, so playing Salvagers is better against Chandra. Playing Karn is better against. Not a lot, right? Like the only thing that like playing Salvagers gets punished by is Chandra. But if we play the Karn first and wish for LED. We're just in a worse spot, assuming that they have the Karn. I don't think we can beat a Karn. So it might be just play to beat the, like a potential Chandra, and just Karn wish for LED right now. Take the hit. Wait, what is, how does this match work out? Because we have to tap this Injure Tomb twice. So we're at essentially 13. We're going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We actually... Oh, no, we could potentially chump off the Salvagers mm -hmm. after we draw infinite cards. So we take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so we should be fine. Although, Chandra plus untap plus puts us dead there, too. So we actually can't beat the Chandra either way. So maybe we just play the Salvagers, let it ride. Because the Salvagers is the better play on, on face value. Salvagers also a better play if they do have a Karn, because at least we have blockers for their goblins and shit. Because maybe we actually wanted to bobble them first, see what they're drawing. That could have definitely ins changed our decision. Oh, they're on the Eldrazi version. That definitely would have influenced my decision. I 
probably would have played the Karn. Well, Thaumazir's a card. Maybe Salvagers is just still the correct play here. Oh no, double P fire. Get wrecked, me. play around that. I definitely should have, uh... So if I bobbled them and seen this Grove, I don't know if I actually would have played the Karn of the Salvagers. It's a tough call. So we're taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight next turn, so we can't have this Tomb. Alright, so I go. We need to draw, like, LED to live here. Although we don't even, like, live, because they can just punish and fire me down. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, they also could have, if we played LED Wish for Garden, they could have potentially just left up the double P-Fire. So we might not have been able to dance around that regardless. Like, play Karn minus for LED in the face of this stuff is, like, pretty suspicious to begin with. Oh, jeez, and I thought not. All right, well, we're dying. Live by the sword, die by the sword. But losing game one in Chalice Mirror sucks a whole lot. Yeah, now I don't think we can draw. Could we actually draw the LED? I don't think that actually would have helped. No. This matchup seems really bad. It's like... It's like the Red Prison matchup, except that they cut all the cards that were actually bad in the matchup for good cards. This matchup seems like pretty heinous. Shave on zeros. Like that seems fine. Definitely want our mana, especially on the play. So if we saw. Yeah, at least they don't have cards, that's true. Yeah, if we see Grove on their deck, they're on the Red Ultrazi deck. Probably means I'm playing the Salvagers that turn anyway, though, because Thought Not Seer, I'd rather have a Salvagers on play, because then we can, like, uh, block Goblins. If they if they Thought Not Me and take the Karn, we can block Goblins and potentially, like, buy back the Bobble a couple times and cycle it off to find an LED or another Karn. Whereas if we play the Karn at minus for LED, and then we get uh, Kar Th Thought Not Seared, they take the Salvagers, obviously, and then they can just attack down the Karn, and we're in a very bad spot. So yeah, I think my line doesn't change. But definitely should have looked first, because there's no reason not to. Make your decisions with the most information you have access to, for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Love to play first. Um, this hand doesn't really do anything. There's a turn one ballista and has two lines of diamonds. Wrong card for these abilities to be good though. I think this is a mulligan. It just doesn't do anything. This hand also doesn't do anything, and that might be the. Hopefully my opponent mulligans, because if we're going to 7, we're going to 5. Uh, not great odds. Let's just get, like, the full combo or something. Keep land, land. So we have to put back two cards here, so we keep land, land, land. Put back the Forge and the Opal. Probably keep Bobble, Mentor, land, land, land. And probably just cycle off the Bobble on turn 1. Possible we don't want to cycle off the forge, but I'm concerned about getting chaliced. Maybe we actually want to drop off one of these lands after we cycle the bobble, too. Hazard. Alright, well, that's not 
the scariest card in the world. Sure. What's this? Provoker? Sure. Name. Or Axe Salvagers or Land of the Diamond or something. Lions of Diamond. Hopefully we don't get Soul and Thought Not Seared for our only relevant card. Oh, this is good. Casting a two drop. Two drops are like the least scary. Th oh no, three drops. That's definitely scarier. Oh, that's not bad. Especially because that doesn't kill my mentor anymore because it's in play. Another mentor. I think I still want to play this LED. What if I stack block this Bone Crusher? The second one. That would suck. Oh, they just have the P fire, sure. Well, that's bad. That means Hazaret's coming for me. So, uh, we may need a chump block to get Hazard so tag for two, not worth it here. We're definitely on the back foot. Want to top deck, Karn, I think might be our best draw. Either one, honestly. Salvagers actually be pretty good because we can do them, oh, never mind. Second punching fire, sure. I was going to say Salvagers might actually be okay because we can manually do the pedal. Salvagers thing where you lose a mana but you gain a mentor trigger every turn. Not a good draw by any stretch. I'll leave that in our hand. So we draw like a third mentor. They get to like jam Hazaret and then that threat's looming. Oh, that's even worse. Seem pretty dead here. Can we even like reasonably top deck a card to win this game? Well, Plaza start, right? Plaza thought on, see what goes comes up after that. Oh no, I was supposed to probably wait because the monks block better. Oh, never mind. Jim's is killing me too. That's bad. Seems like we're going to plow a Hazret and double block a Bone Crusher Giant and then die to this Phyrexian Revoker. If only I had not cast that plow. I think I was supposed to cast it. Well, we could have drawn potentially a good number of four drops. Yeah, I think we need to double block this Bone Crusher plow to Hazret. We get three draw steps. A lot of reasonable ways to deal with a Phyrexian Revoker. That's one. Well, that's unfortunate. Fire Confluence into that game there. Dang. We're actually coming back there too from our Mold of Five. Yeah, our card was not drawing us anything. I probably would have plussed it there, play around with them, getting back Punishing Fires. 
Like we get a second city. We have the ability to get a mentor. Well, we we might be able to do something there. Sucks that we took like exactly the amount of damage that Confluence killed us. I I I very hastily threw that Sword Supply Shards into the Thought Knot, but I think the correct play would have been um, Plow on their turn, because obviously I didn't know I was drawing the second Plow, so if I didn't draw the second Plow, then that uh, Bone Crusher was going to smush me. So the play is probably Plow the Thought Knot, so I could double block the Bone Crusher, but if we Plow the Thought Knot and then drew the second Plow too, we could have traded one Monk for the Bone Crusher instead, because it would have been a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, we still would have died to this fiery confluence, but definitely, would, like, having a monk token to play against the fiery tim ripper definitely would have been better for us. But yeah. Put up a real fight, both those games. I mean, well, not really the first game. The first game was, like, weirdly close, but then we got wrecked pretty bad by the double P fire. The deck feels really good, though, but we didn't really... We played against some of the stuff. We played against the control decks, which is... One of the reasons I'm interested in this deck over, like, Death and Taxes is the the big control decks of the format. Both, like, the Bug X or Bug XX decks, as well as the Miracles decks. I'm a little bit scared of a Death and Taxes, but I don't know. This deck also seems easier to, to hate out. If people are do their do, due diligence, bring their Null Rods and stuff, this deck does have a much, a much harder time fighting. I guess Death and Taxes in a small field would also, right? Because you pack much like Dread and Ice and stuff. I don't know. I'm at a loss here, but it's only 1042, but I'm going to call the stream early today. Let's see. Whoops. Let's see who's streaming. Who's playing some Legacy here? Uh, Lackey is streaming, but he's been streaming for three hours. I'm hoping he's not winding down. Let's, I'm going to peek my head in here. He's sitting and talking, which is not a good sign. I think he's I think he's wrapping the stream here. I hope he's not playing on hosting me. I should host him fast. Uh, doesn't isn't Card Kingdom streaming? What do you want? You're never even on the stream. It's always dog. Say hi to the stream, kitty my other cat, Cat, who does not like coming onto the stream, but is here today for some reason. You can barely see her, because she does not jump all over my shoulder like Dog does. But anyway, I actually meant to mess up the host. Um, is Card Game on? They usually stream on Mondays, right? They are alive, all right. Do I not follow? Oops, I don't follow Card Kingdom. Dang it, Card Kingdom! Put Legacy in your stream title, so MTG streams fine. It's them. But whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna go with this Card Kingdom. They stream live Legacy like every Monday, so uh, I'll send you guys their way for some live paper Legacy. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching today. Hope you had a good time. As always, if you want to support the channel, you can follow, subscribe, donate, etc., etc. Um. And I'll see you guys all on Wednesday for the next stream. Oh no. God, I, I typed in the wrong raid name, or host name, and then got laggy raided me. I knew this was going to happen. I was trying to host before you did it. I'm going to send all of you over to Card Kingdom, though. So, uh, goodbye. Also, thanks for the raid, Lackey. Yes, I just finished. I was going to host you, but then I turned on your stream and I saw you sitting in front of a decklist talking. And I was like, oh no, he's he's done. He's going to wrap his stream too. So I'm going to just go host Card Kingdom. See you guys all later.